Hi guys, uh, we just had a bit of a technical issue on this episode. Um, we had, yeah, Eric said there might have been some distortion or some sort of other issues. Uh, I My equipment was bugging out a bit, so um, I had to fix some of the levels again on, on some of this episode. So there might be some leveling issues and some other issues. Hopefully it won't be too noticeable, but uh, enjoy the episode. listening to uh alternating sloth podcast i guess now we're calling it uh alternating with eric because um eric's been on so many episodes now that uh i've got a, i've decided to change the name a bit um you'll still be able to find the episodes at alternating sloth podcast on spotify but now the episodes of eric will be called alternating with eric at least the new ones now uh so yeah eric how are you doing Oh, I've been doing quite well, just been s- sitting around at home, still might not be able to go to back to work, but yeah, um, it's actually given me some bit of time to catch up on everything, not that I've actually tried, but hey, whatever I can do, I can, um, at the same time, giving me more time to just kind of explore, uh, explore through um, on some of the animes and mangas that we've previously discussed and I've never heard of. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Are you still getting, are you still getting paid though? Are you still getting some subsidy for, for... Of course I am. Okay. <laughs> of course. Uh, otherwise it would be a bit, um, it would be a bit awkward for me to yeah, I was end a up not being able to... <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it would be, it would be a bit awkward if I'm not able to kind of receive, uh, receive any, yeah, receive any kind of money. So, Eric... and... Yeah. What have you been watching, playing, reading? Uh, well, not reading yet. Um, you know, what what have you um, been doing other than what we're going to be reviewing and finishing this week? Um, been going onto my Steam account um, and getting a few games that's been on sale. Um, I know I've been told I shouldn't, but I can't <laughs> help it. There are some, there's some stuff on my wish list I do want to actually get. Um, so some of that stuff has been on sale. And I've been getting that, and I have been playing Ed Connor. Okay, you don't have to ask me about it. Um, <laughs> Eric is obviously... notoriously a bit of a pack rat. He'll he'll buy things and and consume things and then not use them for a while. <laughs> That's why I get on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not that bad. Um, but I guess I guess in some I guess in some way it, it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in some yeah, I mean, in some way, it does kind of come back to bite me. But I mean, I can't help it. Um, but but honestly, most of the things I actually just get are strategy games anyway. Um, it's stuff I do. Um, yeah, it's stuff. It's stuff I do enjoy playing. Um, and strategy games have been my kind of, I get, I guess, bread and butter mm. um, since. Uh, actually just for years uh so whenever i see any whenever i whenever i do see any kind of strategy game on sale or any new strategy game that's been you know that's been put out i really do want to grab it i really do want to have a go at it Mm -hmm. and obviously these can involve anything from um, actually, I can't really pick on one strategy game to say is my favorite. I just like them all. Um, but obvious, obviously, yeah, obviously, I've got some a few favorites that I'm looking forward to getting on sale and buying. But that's just pretty much been me. And f- yeah, um, I guess specifically, I've been playing one of the Total War series because Total War is a hell of a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been me. It's been me playing it around. And yes, I have been playing at Connor. Um, you know, I don't buy it, ignore it, and put it on shelf. Um, 
for all time. Eric um, is also going to be in a uh, strategic um, battle or something. He's growing out this massive battle axe beard at the moment that our uh, <laughs> viewers can't see. His beard is gin- more ginger than my hair at the moment. Uh, it is fucking yeah. massive. You could store birds in it, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I might be getting rid of it soon. Um, since I promised myself to have it, and if I get sick of it, I'll shave yeah. it off. Um, but I mean, obviously, that doesn't mean the end of a beard. It just means shave it off, grow it back again. Won't won't take that long. Or form it, um, do a Dracula look for a while, or uh, try, oh, try a different no, I wouldn't be handlebar mustache. <laughs> I know about my stash. Got the I pulled that off. I have pulled that off at one point, but unfortunately, my cousin was a little bit of a, well, a dick, and so he's made some not so innocent comments about my um, handlebar mustache in the past. So, for now, I'll avoid it. But maybe I don't know. In the future, I might go for it again. Hmm. But I think for now, I'm yeah. I'm probably just gonna shave it off and. Mm-hmm. Uh, grow it back on and see how I feel about it later. Mm-hmm. But I guess on that topic, um, you have actually shaved off your beard, and you've mentioned <laughs> this last time. And even though well, you got well, tell upset, tell me what you think at the moment. Well, that's actually pretty. It's growing back pretty quickly, mm. honestly. Um, got that nice five o'clock shadow time. look. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty clear last time, but now it's it has grown somewhat. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, yeah, obvious, obvious, obviously for you, you probably pulled it off better than me, but, um, <laughs> oh, no. actually, I, I, think I can't you're... grow out a big as beard as you. I tried and I couldn't. Uh, you just kind of have to let it, let it grow, really. Um, don't do anything to it. Don't touch it. Just ignore it. And, um, yeah, if, yeah, just see how well, it, just see how well it goes. Um, should be able to grow it out. I guess long-ish. I don't know. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah. yeah. So so Eric's been doing that. Um, I I'm still. Well, actually, I'm not watching One Piece as much for once this week. Um, I watched maybe two episodes of of One Piece this week, or I read two chapters. I, see, I don't even remember what I did with One Piece because. I, I watched a bit of it and then I just watched um, an arc of Dragon Ball Super because uh, that was on the back burner for me for a while. I watched the <laughs> Tournament of Power arc and I think I watched another arc. I don't remember what it was called, but I watched a decent chunk and then I just stopped because I was watching it with my brother as well and we were watching it um, in the dub. And uh, yeah, because I, I don't like the sub of Dragon Ball Z. Um, I'm not going to get into that here, but um, we we wanted to watch the dub, so we did, and we had to wait a while for it to, to come out. And um, it's been out for a while now, so I should have gone on it sooner. But um, I finally got on to watching uh, the Future Trunks arc, and oh boy, was that uh, was that great. Um, there were one or two fights that dragged out, but generally the pacing was pretty good. And uh, Zamasu is a awesome villain. Um, enjoyed him quite a bit. Enjoyed Goku Black. Some overall good times, and uh, I felt like a kid watching it, cheering on my my favorite character or well, second favorite character, Kid Trunks, after Vegeta, of course. I do remember. I do remember the. Um... How how they introduced the future trunks arc um, when it when it came out when it um yeah when I first saw it and I liked it I liked how they mm. introduced future trunks as um you know the un- as an unbeatable badass oh, who yeah. just yeah. walks up who just walks up to what is it Freezer and his father <laughs> and just absolutely destroys them I thought this is awesome it's funny because um, he has the worst haircut as well he has like a weird bowl cut thing. But when I was a kid, I was like, "This guy's so cool, and he's got a sword and a jagger." Yeah, you and kind then of, you I kind look of, back and I'm like, think, "He's got a bowl yeah. cut." <laughs> you, well, you kind of would um put that put that part put that little detail aside to the fact that mm. this is an overpowered guy who just comes in and gives Freezer the um mm. biggest backslap in the world, mm. and just kind of walks away like an like a you know pretty much just like a, any badass would. Um, but that bowl cut seems to be more more close more closely aligned with um what his mother ha- had. 
Because then, yeah. um, then Bulma have a bowl cut. Yeah, she's got a bit of a. Yeah. She's well, she changes her hair depending on what season, yeah. I guess. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of funny. But if if you like the future trunks uh, trunks arc, which was I think it was like my favorite arc because I when I was a kid I actually hated the freezer arc because of just how badly it was. I like the dub for Dragon Ball Z, but going back and watching the dub for the TV show um, when they were doing Frieza, it was just so bad. Like, just I just didn't like Frieza's voice at all. Um, when they did the Kai version of Dragon Ball, they really cleaned up Frieza Saga, which was so good because mm-hmm. the pacing was bad in that arc um, in the anime, and the dubbing wasn't great, and I wasn't going to watch it in Japanese. I'm sorry, I like the dub more. Um, and, and then Future Trunks art came along and I was like, oh, the pacing's better. All the actors seem to know what they're doing because, um, Dragon Ball Z had a switch back in the day from being dubbed in Canada to, uh, being dubbed in Texas by Funimation. Um, so, and they got around, I think, halfway through Freezer Saga. So it took them a while, I think, to actually get into the characters and, sort of figure out who they were playing um but once they get to future trunks it's like they you know they instantly know what they're doing Mm -hmm. um they're not perfect but it does the job and they got better and better as they kept on dubbing more stuff uh and I, i yeah that was the arc that got me like sort of hooked on the show and then you know um of course i've went to like a lot of the movie showings i've been i've played most of the video games um and yeah, playing this, watching this um, new Future Trunks arc with Goku Black and Zamasu as the villains, uh, that was so cool. Um, it's interesting. I, I forget that there's moments in Dragon Ball Z where um, the villain doesn't just turn up and they just fight. There, there's actually like a couple episodes that are backstory and mm-hmm. moments where we get to see like we we get one big fight in the first yeah. uh, or like the first couple episodes just to sort of. Uh, get us uh, get us pumped but uh but then we we get a bit of um we get a bit of melodrama we get a bit of story we get to sort of um figure out about zamasu's uh ideologies and and all that sort of thing it's it's it was fascinating and um i loved it and i was i was cheering it was a bit cheesy at times and it dragged on a bit at, in a couple places but i generally liked it um and yeah i i had a good time I, I did I did it in two nights that whole uh, thing so you can tell how much I, I liked it versus one piece um, well when I watched the alabaster alabaster arc I was in the same sort of thing I think I binged in two or three nights when I watched it the first time <laughs> this one um, you know this versus say the Rob Lucci thing we talked about last time where I was on like a good momentum and then that fight happened and I kind of like dragged out watching it because it was dragging out um didn't have that as much of this i just straight watched it and uh james masters um who people will know from buffy the vampire slayer he uh plays the main villain in the dub for this and he is fantastic uh did a brilliant job i um heard him do a crazy scream that just made me go oh his voice must be sore right now uh but yeah, just great work, um, great, great, se- uh, great season of the show. Uh, yeah, mm. that's that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, sadly, sadly though, um, I only as far as far as um, as far as Dragon Ball is concerned, I've only ever watched the old series. Um, never really, never really got into Kai or any of those even, newer. Even, sorry, yeah. when you say original, do you mean Dragon Ball Z or do you mean Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Oh, okay. um, those the those are really the only ones I've ever um, looked into, mm-hmm. kind of followed and paid attention to. Um, everything else really was kind of I don't know. I felt like I just be re- I felt like I was going to rewatch the same mm-hmm. thing, you know, even I, though shorter. Yeah, um, I get it. I, I mean, yeah. my biggest problem of Super. Uh, and the reason I put it off and, and I was pissed of it is um, you have to skip like the first two arcs <laughs> because the first two seasons mm-hmm. are just um, really badly animated versions of the first two movies that came out recently, the Freezer one mm. and the Beerus one, uh, Battle of Gods. Um, 
you kind of just have to skip them because they're not they don't really add that much more to the story they're not well animated um and it doesn't really pick up till tournament power tournament of power a little bit but once you get into like future trunks it's like the show is like back to what you love about it and there's even some funny callbacks to dragon ball and other things like that like uh you get to see the evil containment wave i never thought i'd see that again that was that was pretty cool um and there's a cool joke with that as well so enjoyed that damn yeah yeah um yeah unfortunately oh eric yeah you're you're cutting out a bit. But so, hmm? You were cutting oh, out. Hang on. Oh, I don't know why it's weird. Um, can you still hear me now? Yeah, I can still hear you now. Um, but other than okay, that, good. I am watching. Uh, I'm finally getting on to 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 finishing off a show called um, Golden Kamui. That's a that's a pretty cool show. Oh yes. Yeah. I've only, I've only read it. Um, I good. read some of it. I never actually watched the anime, but I thought it was I thought it was pretty decent in terms of how they um introduced introduced the historical narrative for Japan during yeah. I think. Was it, it was World War One era period, wasn't it? Yes, um, something like that. It's really interesting because um, I've seen shows that you know tell this time mm. period, and there's there's a couple ways people do this. Um, they they usually go somewhat realistic, but super violent, or they go um, mm. super yeah. sort of anime e. Um, super high jumps and special techniques and all that this show there's none of that it's like it's like a full Mm. middle alchemist approach um to a sort of Uh, not a samurai era but a but a um pre an early era japan story like where uh it's it's a serious Mm. and it's somewhat realistic and no one has crazy um superpowers and i know i just said full middle alchemist and people are like they have superpowers and that but what I mean is, no one's doing crazy jumps. Um, it's fairly mm. serious. Uh, I, I feel like moments of it could be um, just told in a regular Japanese movie without actually being animated. Like it's, it would work pretty well uh, in, in both. And um, it's really interesting. Um, I, I actually, I tried watching a bit of it in the dub, but. I, I don't think the dub's bad, I just don't think it works because it's it's a very Japanese, very... Um, there are things that are hard even for the Japanese voice actors to pronounce because it's not just Japanese words that they're having to say. Um, mm. They're having to talk about Ainu culture and there's a lot of... Um, no, yeah, yeah. whole different language there. Um, I had to pause a couple of times watching the show because I don't know how to pronounce a lot of the words they're saying and... Um, <laughs> I would be following along the sentence, hear something I don't quite understand, and then having to sort of do a double take, read it for again, then play it back again so I could hear exactly how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, so there, there was a bit of that, um, but the show's generally, it's generally pretty good, and um, not many shows that are set in, in Hokkaido, and not many shows are set about Ayanu culture, and um, I guess the more... The other thing too is usually these stories they this is a little bit i think after the meiji era or sort of a weird not quite past meiji but sort of almost near uh the end of the meiji era sort mm. of thing and it's it's focused more what's interesting uh interestingly enough it's it's focused more on the uh some of the soldiers and stuff as well not just the rogue swordsman characters or the characters that are trying to be sort of like um what we think of in the last samurai those you know those last group of uh of swordsmen that were were trying to fight and um oh yeah like like the the shinsengumi there's a shinsengumi character in this um hijikata and um every other form of japanese media that you consume with him in it uh usually he is a young guy and usually it's sort of pre Meiji era, or um, sometimes even like with the case of Veroni Kenshin, 
Um, even if it's after the Meiji era, the characters usually aren't that old. They're not like an old man with a beard. But in this one, he's an old man with a beard. He can still wield a sword, but he's um, he's really old <laughs> compared to what what we're used to seeing of these um, Shinsen Gumi guys. So it's it's an interesting show, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue. I mean, what was his what was his what was his age? What was his confirmed age? Because I can't remember. I don't remember, but he. He would be to me. I think he's about sixties or maybe seventies in mm. Golden Kamui, but usually he's portrayed in like his early, his late thirties and forties in yeah. most material. Um, Hajime Saito, who most people know from Roni Kenshin, is probably like one of the other guys who gets portrayed a lot, and um, usually he's portrayed in like his at most his like early fifties. Uh, before he even has any gray hair or anything like that um and of course he's you know most most people will know him uh for roni kenshin um but he's also been betrayed and in, in some other shinsen gumi uh related things but it's just it's just interesting to we don't get to see uh that version of this this historical figure um portrayed like this so it's that that, that was um that was interesting i'm also <laughs> i'm also watching uh uh, uh cutie honey <laughs> flash because uh, i i read the serious? manga of cutie honey because i like going to guy some of going guys stuff um and mm. the opening theme is catchy as fuck i don't care uh if you hate the show if you love the show listen to the opening and tell me you are not going to sing along and and love the theme song the devil man theme song is great but it's nowhere near as catchy as the cutie honey theme song and i've been mm. watching flash and um it's kind of tailored to the sailor moon audience there's some parts of it i don't like which are sort of tailoring to that audience mm. but there's parts of it which i do like um I, it's always funny seeing sort of the sailor moon sort of uh going towards that sort of design style but they've got to include the gona guy villains so like <laughs> they look more like gona guy characters they're more monstrous they're more um ugly looking and um they usually wear like types of clothing or aesthetically they just look really like uh itchy you, you know you know what i mean like they've they've got their tits yeah. out or they've got so and they're not drawn but but you're like oh yeah that character's clearly got its tits out and and this show is not aiming for that audience but mm. um yeah it's, but it's I, it, i've been watching that that's just a fun sort of show i watch while i'm watching uh golden kamui which i'm on to episode four it's just one of those shows that i I'd read quite a bit of, but then had just never watched, and I said, I'm going to watch this at some point, or I'm going to finish reading this, and now I'm finally getting onto it, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, I haven't really been watching anything, because for some reason I stick more to the reading material than anything else, um, but I've still continued my trend of looking mostly at the, what is it, the... Korean manhwa and Chinese manhwa. So, one, I, I've uh, managed to catch up to the one previously I've looked at, which is the zombie apocalypse with um, cultivating superpowers, which is apparently a theme in most Chinese manhwas. Um, there are some Chinese manhwas uh, that don't these, follow sorry, this are these, trend, um, but... are these Western-style zombies, or are these, like, hopping vampires? These are Western style zombies, but oh, okay. obviously with the addition of um, the Chinese cultivation theme found in most in most of the Chinese mon Chinese mangas, um, which is yeah. So I've caught up with that one, and um, basically last last thing I saw was main characters defending an old tree, fighting back from ways and ways of zombies. Um, it's yeah, it's a bit out of context, but um, if you yeah, this is um this is a bit out of a norm zombie apocalypse th um, series uh, where humans humans and z and zombies both have abilities and powers that make each um quite top tier above what you'd normally see, and this was something this was something I enjoyed and obviously. I'll have to wait a bit before it's, I don't know, updated with another 20 chapters that I can finish in 10 minutes. Um, but the other thing I've looked into is another 
It's another interesting little. It's another interesting little uh, series called Iron Ladies, uh, which is in the Chinese uh, manga series. Um, obviously, it's it's, it's a little not bit about of an interesting Fetcher, one. Is it? <laughs> no, um, it's kind of the closest thing to describe it to is almost is almost like the um, is Infinite Stratus, mm-hmm. um, in where in where. Um, it's a world. It's a world where women have the ability to basically don special suits, allowing them to fight. But in this one, it gets a little bit more political. It gets a bit more. Um, there's a lot more talk of ethics and morals, especially when the main character is one that's being portrayed as a, I guess, a tyrannical, murderous bastard who technically does what he does. Um, but I mean, it's. Personally, I thought it was well worth a read, um, especially since especially since it's not as mm, I guess it doesn't have that kind of sexual context um, that um, let's see that that's portrayed at the beginning or even on the cover. It actually is a little bit more interesting. It doesn't go into as much talk and in depth as say Death Note. No mm-hmm. offense. Um, but it's still a bit of an interesting read, I found. Um, quite sad because I'm almost finished with it as well. So yeah, um, that's pretty much what I've been reading and looking into. Um, obviously, I haven't really been watching much <laughs> anime besides what we've dis- besides what we will talk about today. But um, I've yeah, because I've just mostly been yeah, just reading through all these mangas and even managed to finished one of the ones we've reviewed last time mm. which is good and yeah. yeah it's pretty much uh, just so, yeah. so speaking of that we have a new segment we're going to do at, um now where we're going to um instead of reviewing two mangas we're going to have one manga and we're going to have what we call the finish segment where we're going to finish off a title that we have previously reviewed and let you guys know what we we thought um <laughs> Some I I don't know how much progress Eric made on on, on some of the titles or uh, I didn't finish actually a title this week so I kind of cheated a little bit with this one, um, but <laughs> but if Eric has uh, even if he's half finished I'll, I'll I'll let him talk about it this week just because we're, we're well, gonna we're gonna start sort of doing well it. yeah well I have managed to actually finish a title kind of okay. <laughs> well um, we'll we'll get to that and we'll um, get to it so. Let's start with the anime review, as we always do. So, uh, I have the premise here, but why don't I let Eric tell me... Uh, Eric, can you tell me who wrote this uh, the, the anime we reviewed? It's, it's based on a very uh, somewhat well-known manga. And, um, Clamp. <laughs> it has, yeah, it's written by Clamp. <laughs> and and yeah. what's, what's the premise? The premise, well, a young man had, young men was, um, young men introduced in the series is apparently being chased by supernatural spirits. And upon running away from them, he touches a fence on a shop and they suddenly disappear. He is then prompted to walk into the shop by apparently whatever cosmic force exists in this universe. And he's introduced to what I think should be the main character of the series, Yuko, <laughs> who is essentially the shop owner that grants wishes to anyone who comes into it. Mm. It's, it was one of the, it was actually one of my, one of my favorite um, manga series mm. to read, uh, way way back when. Um, I think it was basically, I basically, uh, yeah, I basically read it. Um, when I was first introduced to um, anime and manga, and I mm. thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to look at, um, and it is, yeah, it is. It is in a universe that crosses over on itself, and there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of depth to this whole um, mm. series, mm. and I thoroughly did enjoy it. Mm. But basically, that's what the synopsis is. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, so this is, uh, funnily enough, this is one of Eric's favorite titles and also one of my favorite titles. And um, 
I usually try not to pick uh, titles that lots of people know. Sometimes I like this to be sort of shining light on on shows that maybe don't get as much of a, a look at. But I really wanted to go for an interest uh, an interesting theme that um, sometimes is done in anime and manga, which is done a lot in shoujo anime and manga, and that is the magic shop theme and. Uh, we, when we get to the manga uh, segment, there is a uh, magic shop manga that we reviewed that's similar to sort of what the premise of this is, which is uh, you have a shop um, which either usually grants wishes or gives some sort of people uh, something they want, but there is a twist of fate in the story. There's some sort of um, monkey's paw type thing, and and since we're on the su- subject of the monkey's paw, I thought I would talk about uh, Clamp as a um, the authors of this manga. They are of course known for Card Captors Sakura and Subasa and Magic Knight Ray Earth and a whole bunch of other great titles. And it's a large group of um, female writers and artists who work on this title and they were heavily influenced by uh, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and um, by the novels of a mystery author in Japan called Itagawa Rampa. Uh, another influence that I would assume was a big influence on them because there's even a, a story about this in the manga we're going to review today called uh, Holic or Triple X Holic, whatever you want to call it. Um, there is a story that, uh, of course, I've mentioned before, Monkey's Paw. Now, this is even adapted uh, into a, a little episode in uh, Holoc, so I would think it's kind of an influence because um, most of these magic shop type mangas usually have uh, these twist of fate, these you make a wish or uh, you, you get something back, but you have to follow these rules or... Um, if you you've got to phrase your wording right because um, you make you make one false decision you you say something wrong and um, everything can can turn bad so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, monkey's paw because I did it, Holic did a version of this and and their version was more contemporary more focused on the uh, Japanese side of things. But the original Monkey's Paw story, I believe, is from the uh, 19th century and is written by a guy called W.W. Jacobs. And um, it's about a couple, uh, Mr. and Mrs. White. They have a friend who comes back from India. Uh, He gets from this mystic or some sort of shamanist type of guy. He gives them uh, Monkey's Paw, um, this friend of theirs, and he comes back with it. He says it's ruined his life and he warns them about it and then they take it and um, they don't take his warning. They wish for $200 uh, and what ends up happening is their son goes to work the next day. He gets mutilated in the machine and then the company comes over says, hey, um, your son was mutilated in one of our machines. Um, We're going to give you some hush money, $200. So uh, that's that's the first twist to one of the many wishes in the story, and um, it just goes get bad from there. And this is a short story, so there's actually not much more from that. But um, I won't completely spoil it, even though it's a <laughs> several several years old story. Um, but it, I would assume it had a massive influence on a number of authors, and um, versions of this must have gone to Japan and lots of other countries because it's had a huge impact. Okay, we're we're back to recording. Um, hopefully, there won't be any other issues. Um, so yeah, that the monkey's paw story um, is an interesting one. That's that's been parodied and retold in a number of versions, um, and uh, that that's where a lot of I think these magic shops sort of um, and tales in the crypt and a lot of things like that come from. And uh, I, I, I absolutely love this story. I think the characters are fascinating. I think it's interesting because it's taking the sort of narrative um, that I've mentioned and, and, and making it a bit more Japanese. Um, there are other like sort of versions of this, like um, Pet Shop of Horrors, but that's set in the US and um, that's a bit different. Um, and that's more like Tales from the Crypt, and this is a bit more... 
uh, folk tales, but with the more of a Japanese spin to them. Um, so, Eric, what will what? Uh, before, I've got some pros and cons here, but what I thought I might get into is um, what versions did you watch? Because I said you could watch the movie or the TV show. Um, what did what versions did you watch? I definitely watched the um, TV series. Um, I've watched the. I've previously watched Triple X Holics, so I just watched the first few episodes of the subbed version and one episode of the dub version because mm-hmm. I remember liking the dub version as well. Yep. Um, so there was that, um, but obviously I mostly looked into the uh, the manga the manga series more. I managed to um, well, I, man- I managed to get up to its second. Um, Sec- I guess it's second season uh, in the manga. Um, mm-hmm. After that, I just kind of stopped because I thought they decided not to continue it. But I might be—I might have been wrong and mm-hmm. just haven't been bothered getting back into it. But um, I watched—I definitely—I definitely watched the yeah you know, sub end up version, and uh, yeah, I liked—I uh, liked both because it does sound like it does sound like from both sides the the actors are having quite a bit of fun with it mm-hmm. um not to say that other series don't mm-hmm. do it but especially with um uh, the you with uh, the character yuko mm. i think that's where a lot of the fun comes from mm. because she was actually one of my favorite characters in this whole series mm-hmm. they even not just not just in triple x Hollywood, but in the entirety of clamp that i knew about mm. um because she's this one mysterious character you hardly know anything about, and she's a but, bit of a trickster as well. Exactly, and I think that's where the um, that's where the charm comes from. Because mm. her her character, she's just hilarious, especially when she I guess slightly teases and bullies what the new <laughs> the other main character. Mm. Um, but I can tell, but I can tell even with um, her voice actress, there's a bit of fun there to be had um, with playing this with playing this character and. I do like I did like Yuko because she did um with her with her character she kind of uh, she allowed enough of herself to be seen but not enough that you would already um, understand who and what she is mm-hmm. like the little there's little sprinkles here and there um, throughout the whole series that kind of that kind of build up her character but it's not there unlike some there isn't an immediate arc mm-hmm. in the in the series that mm-hmm. kind of tells everything yeah. you know her story her story her character development everything you want to know about her well okay character development not so much but um everything you want to know about her sprinkles uh, itself throughout the whole series we through i think through the manga more so than the anime we do mm-hmm. get to see different sides of her i think the anime mostly focuses on her um, her wise side and her, you know, her her, her um, trickster nature, and um, we get to see a little bit of her kindness. But I think later on in the manga, we get to see more of her bond with Watanuki, um, her a bit of her motherly nature with um, how she looks after the people around her and and sees them, and uh, that that's sort of what comes out. I think a bit more. That's sort of more the development we get to see her open up a bit more to the people around her because um what tanuki you know when we when we first see him he's we we know him straight away the type of character he is he's kind of a he's kind of a nerdy wussy kind of guy um but as the series progresses we get to see him sort of mature a little bit and Mm -hmm. um yeah and uh be a little bit less frightened and and also um sort of realize the bonds around him and um he's a different character after a certain arc of the manga um which i won't mention yet but we are going to drop a spoiler tag now so if we do do any spoilers i'm warning you now uh but since we talked about the dub and the sub a bit uh i have some pros and cons obviously on this and my biggest con is um 
It's not necessarily bad. I just thought that I I preferred the dub voice of um, Yuko just a little bit more mm. because in the sub they um, Japan has a very different idea of what um, a seductress is. Someone who's a bit of a trickster. Someone who's a bit to be a bit sexy. They have a different idea of it, and um, yeah. a deeper sort of lower voice isn't you know someone who's got a bit of a sultry kind of voice isn't really a thing in in japan um i think i even read somewhere that um robin from one piece the actress was told um to actually put her voice pitch up a little bit because Mm -hmm. the lower voice thing isn't really seen as that attractive in japan um and yuko for me uh, i feel like the japanese voice it's not bad but i prefer the english one because i think it it captures the character a little bit more but i do think the general japanese cast is pretty good um jun fukuyama who plays watanuki does a great job uh but todd hapakon also does a great job but i think the two standout performances in the dub if you're watching it in in english is um yuko and i also think uh domaki because um you get to hear a very different type of voice from uh j michael tatum who's usually um just he sounds very different in this he's a lot more calmer he's a lot more chill a lot more laid back it's uh it's an interesting performance and he's he's got to use very few words um to project the emotion and feeling of this character and he does a great job so, i mean yeah i mean to be to be fair um Domaki was that kind of character built up to be the more um, cool and calm and collective stereotype. Yeah, yeah, I mean you see that you see that in um, Yuko, but that's kind of broken by the fact that she's um, by her trickster character type, which also means she you know jokes around quite a bit. Hmm. With Domaki, that doesn't happen at, almost at all. So I guess he's got so a bit I of guess, a sarcasm yeah. side to him, but that's about at most we get to see with his humor yeah but i mean then again it's not exactly helped by the fact that most of the time his facial expression doesn't change <laughs> um, you know he um i guess whoever drew him didn't didn't even have didn't put didn't get to put too much um, effort into the expressions because most of the time he has the default setting of mm-hmm. i see you're right you know no smiles no frowns no creasing of the um no creasing of any wrinkles no not too many narrowing of the eyes um yeah every time every time domaki does come into the scene there's no real there's no real expression drawn on him um which does kind of solidify that cool calm collective character of his um i think the only time i've ever seen his expression change was in a later episode uh or sorry later part of the um series when he gets afflicted with one of the spiritual um entities that um plague in the world um obviously we won't put too much of a spoiler into it but that was um but that but that area was when we do get to see him you know break out in quite a lot of expression Mm -hmm. which i did like seeing because it was a big massive surprise it's like (laughs) okay so this so we get this guy who's always looking like he doesn't have a care in the world and suddenly oh wow i am seeing more expressions on your face right now than (laughs) ever seriously where this come from Mm. yeah um yeah so i think that was um mm. yeah, with, uh, yeah and with his with his voice actor um yeah yeah pretty much yeah pretty much i agree with you mm. on that mm. one mm. as well so i want to get into a couple other um pros and cons before we uh we might i think we should even talk a little bit um and spoil just some of the stories just so we can talk about what stories we like what what episodes were interesting but i wanted to uh talk about a couple of the um interesting stories that um i i quite personally um some of the some of the uh stories that i quite like but but the main thing i wanted to talk about was the biggest pro for me i think is also the music but the show and the sound cues um there's some great sound work with the sound effects going on like to really set the mood and um some of the foley sounds that are there some of the uh some of like when when sound actually comes in when it's not there um and just the orchestra sort of uh musical score yeah it, it's kind of orchestra ah, orchestral sort of score um which comes out even better in the movie uh if you get to see that there's a great 
amazing piano piece and um the movie is probably the best the series looks uh because the biggest con i have of this is the tv show uh animation wise and visually i think a lot of the music and the sound is um what sort of holds the visuals kind of up a little bit higher because if you take that away from it um visually it's not that great looking in a couple places uh some of the animation isn't great in some places in places and um, the biggest problem i have is they stretch the characters out the characters are semi tall on the manga but in the <laughs> anime they are almost like yeah. uh I don't know, like y- Yuko's like a spider in a couple places, which kind of works for her character. <laughs> yeah, she but, incr- yeah, she's portrayed but, as this incredibly tall and really skinny character yeah. as well. And um, that was the one strange thing I thought about when I first got into um, the Triple X Holic series is like how tall the characters are. Even some, even the. Um, yeah, even some of the even some of the women who are supposed to be shorter than some of the men always seem to be taller and longer than they actually are. Yeah, I, I think that's more. I I think because Holic looked pretty okay in the manga. I think with some of these mm. characters, they didn't look as gigantic. But no. like like Himawari, uh, who's one of the female characters, who's kind of a. Um, who uh, Watsunuki, our main character, kind of has a crush on. She Kinda. is um, <laughs> she she is not that tall. She's maybe about like an average height. Mm. She's she's like maybe yeah, she, a, a little bit uh, shorter than me. I'm I'm about five nine. She's maybe about five one or something like that. Mm. Um, she's not too tall, but but in the anime, it's like she's six foot. It's like every character is six foot like you see characters walk across the street and they look like they're bigger than every car in a couple shots and and i thought that was pretty crazy um and and speaking of of like background shots the other problem as well um some of the characters just aren't drawn like they're just sort of like stick figure almost like they're they're Uh, crudely drawn background characters which wasn't really the case in the manga either um so that's that's really my only problem um if you want to see the best yeah. visual looking version of this series go watch the movie um the plot for it isn't amazing but that movie is visually a tour de force and the music is really good with the visuals um but the anime kind of a letdown in a couple of places i thought to be honest um i think if it wasn't for the music and the sounds and the the dub actually as well um i wouldn't really be watching the anime i would just stick more to the manga which i kind of already do because they don't they stop um they stopped dubbing it to a certain point and and you can watch the sub and and watch the rest of the show but uh to me the visuals aren't there enough for me to really continue with it Mm. without a dub or something else to really get me into it um yeah i do personally yeah um personally personally i would have kept reading it and watching it because i thought the art style and um, the visuals looked the visuals just looked really beautiful and wavy, and they did um they did a bit of it especially in the opening um when you're first introduced to the episode mm. um especially with all the smoke and um movements great of, great opening song by the way as well love it yeah Catchy. opening song was one of the ones I put nice husky my vocals playlist. <laughs> yeah it was it was one of the opening songs i put on my playlist which was great and i do agree with you in terms of how the background characters are drawn in the anime um even the with um with some animes when you see background characters you do see they have color and expression um you know that kind of um reflects what's happening that reflects the main event happening around the two main characters but um, in the case of Triple X Holic, most of the time that's not the case. And the background characters not only have no expression, they have no color. They're all mm. grayed out. And yeah, yeah. Only the only time the only time I've seen the background characters um, have any sort of color and expression is when they're directly affected by an event mm. or by a character. Mm. You know, that's um, yeah, by one of the main characters main characters or the main events of the mm-hmm. story um especially in the first part of the 
series where what Nuki, you know, um, happens upon a group of schoolgirls and they are talking about all this spiritual, um, and one of them is actually just talking about being haunted. And her and three of her friends, they're all colored, they're all drawn, they have expressions, mm. even their voices, even hearing their voices, there is expression there. Mm -hmm. But all the other background characters, even the ones <laughs> what Nuki walks past, it's like, yeah. Uh, what happened to everybody else? That looks a bit cheap and grayed out. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, well, it does um, push quite a bit of focus mm -hmm. onto the main character. Mm -hmm. The impact of an event or situation on the character kind of lessens when mm -hmm. there's no one else around, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of see it happen, and there's no impact mm -hmm. from the crowd either. I mean. You know, you're not supposed to, you know, um, follow what the crowd usually does, but mm -hmm. it helps. In, it helps when you watch a series. You know, if the impact is heightened by what the crowd, um, by the crowd's own expressions and own opinions of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. kind of how, especially in, in um, you know, all these harem or etchy type animes and mangas where the main character gets called out in the middle of a crowd as being a pervert mm -hmm. and kind of the whole crowd just kind of you know leads on with that and yeah. as silly as it might be that's actually that, that whole thing you know heightens the situation and that's what i kind of liked even you know uh, people might not like these series but i like the um the heightened um you know the the heightening of the mm. situation when mm. the whole crowd kind of looks at it, it's like he's a pervert, he's a pervert. You know, it's the um, what is it? It's the villagers with pitchforks and torches, um, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah. You know? And there's there's moments where it's like the the crowd's reacting to something, but it's like I don't know. There's less impact, and it feels like I'm watching like a weird like. Mm cartoon that they couldn't be bothered animating certain sections but they're animate one section so yeah there's weird stuff like that but let's um let's let's since we really like the show let's uh let's talk about some of our favorite um episodes uh one thing i do want to just finish off on, on uh to just to say is um the show is episodic as well which we're going to cover as well with the manga we read today which is um which both of these are stories where most of them are told in one or two one episode usually um covers one story kind of like in the manga they'll cover it like by one sort of uh chapter you know tells a different story uh usually you know there, there's a couple two-parters um and there's a couple story arcs but most of the time um it's 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 little stories and and uh yeah so eric why don't we start with you uh, what did you like of, of what was what what what's being adapted? What what were some of the episodes that you really liked? Um, uh, frankly, the episodes where um, it shows it shows the Triple X Hulk universe tied in with um, the other Clamp universes. Those are my favorites because mm. it does give. Um, I guess, but, I guess but were they sorry? Like, were they in the anime? Because we're just we're just talking about uh, the anime here. Yeah, both the anime and the manga um, both have the Triple X Hulk universe kind of um, intersect with other universes made by Clamp, um, mm -hmm. including Subasa and Carcaptor Sakura. Mm -hmm. um, these were my these were my favorite episodes because you know it wasn't something I usually saw when I first started looking at and reading mangas and looking at, um, watching animes because I've almost never seen. You know, um, a group of writers create a whole bunch of um, series, but almost I've almost never seen them intersect these series with each oh, other, okay. which I thought was really interesting and really new to me, and I really loved it. Mm -hmm. um, just to see these moments, as little mm -hmm. as they were, you know, to see the universes, you know, create created by the same authors intersect with each other and create this grand story. I thought that was fantastic, but I think. But I guess in terms of the most memorable episode for me, um, I can't remember whether this was in the anime. I think it was in the anime. Um, I distinctly remember it more in the manga of Triple X Holic, but there is one episode of when a customer comes to see Yuko and she's holding a photo, which ah, plays yeah. out a scene. That, yeah. one, that was my favorite one because that was my most memorable one. So 
Oh, do we put a spoiler tag up on we this? Did, or we did. We've we've put a spoiler tag a little while ago. Oh, okay. Um, just making sure. So let's not go too fast with the spoiler though. No, don't just Fair. throw it in there. Let's give us yeah. some details. So. Yeah girl comes so, in she's got like an ugly yellow dress i'm sorry it just is kind of an ugly yellow thing well, she's got on um but she comes in and she she looks kind of guilty and she's got mm-hmm. this photo in her hand and she keeps on wanting to get rid of it um and eric why don't you tell us just just tell us briefly what's in the photo not not what happens later on in the photo but what what do we see at first in the photo so what we see first in the photo is of another woman whose picture is being t- taken and she's um so what what actually happens this is a picture of another woman on top of a cliff um overlooking the sea okay mm. and the woman who comes into the shop she's in the photo as well and it it moves to show that the woman who had taken uh the fo- it, you know it, the woman it who came slowly to the moves shop, and you know, who, and yeah yeah and the woman who had t- who had come into the shop was the woman who took the photo. Mm. So she comes over to the other woman to, I guess, show her the photo. And then suddenly, for some inexplicable reason, the other woman um, falls off the cliff. Yeah. And so... And the camera keeps is- on... The, what's interesting about this is it's a single photo, but uh, something makes the the photo keep moving and um eventually this woman demands can you burn the photo and uh the great twist that we get here is as as she as yuko is burning the photo we see the woman fall off the cliff and we see the other woman who's came into the shop we see her face slowly turn around and we see this great uh evil grin and in the manga um I'd say the anime did this a little bit better because we we get a bit of a sound cue and um, it happens very slowly and then it just boom we get a little bit of that face and then it's back to Watanuki's reaction as he's um, realizing what's happened and mm. um, yeah I, I, I thought that was a, a great twist. Yeah, I, you would think you would think after that you know after the burning of the you know after the burning mm. of the photo. Um, it wouldn't be a happy it wouldn't be a um satisfying resolution but it actually was a satisfying resolution especially with um i guess in some way the involvement of karma um mm. if it, if this does piques anyone piques anyone's interest to watch this um best go do it because it was personally for me a very memorable episode yeah. out of all of them um, there's there's another twist at the end of this but we're not going to reveal that you guys can can watch mm-hmm. the full episode yeah. and see how it plays out and then uh see see the other little twist that's in there um because there's there's always a couple of little twists within the story that that make the episodes uh interesting mm-hmm, definitely um so other than that the only i guess other memorable part of the whole um uh, the only other episode uh, episode I, f- I remember from it is i guess the I guess, as I mentioned previously, um, the one part where Domiki has drawn expressions um, quite distinct. Mm-hmm. Um, the this um, you know this part of the story does lead on further down and explain more of, I guess, more more about Watanuki and how he develops in the story. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, it kind of all starts simply by um, you know Watanuki and Domiki cleaning out a garden and there's a spider web and mm. domiki decides to just get rid of it and then he's um this one's in yeah. the manga actually a little bit more yeah. than the anime yeah um, um, i believe it, it has one... been animated i think yeah. i think but it has in the been animated season. i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it has been but yeah um in any case this is just one where um this is one episode where domiki gets cursed by a spider and so you know from the from the you know beginning on towards the resolution this is one this is one of the few times um i got to see domiki's drawn face and drawn face with expressions that are outside of a calm cool collected one mm. um so you know you get the expressions of surprise pain confusion and all that and it was really um you know it was like a bit of a refreshing mm. thing to see you know well, as it's a yeah. big emotional arc as well that connects mm. them and then there's yeah. another story i believe either before or right after that's um involves Himawari where Watanuki gets injured and there's a big uh, climactic yeah, yeah, moment yeah. in there and um in fact a little bit after that is where I sort of uh lost interest in this manga there is a big um 
let's just say there's a big moment and a certain character is gone we won't say which character but when that character is gone the show kind of loses a bit of momentum and uh you're a little sad to see see it go because um because that that character kind of makes the series revolve around and 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 keeps it going and and yeah once that character is gone something else happens and sort of changes how the story works and it doesn't quite work as well as it did before there's mm. still some interesting moments but it's not yeah. as interesting um but yeah th those are two very interesting arcs um and the episode you mentioned obviously with the photo was a was a great moment uh the two mm. parts i wanted to talk about um so obviously the one i mentioned just before there's an arc of um, Himawari the girl that Watanuki has a crush on uh, I've only read it in the manga but it was um, when you're reading the whole manga up to that point and then this happens it's like a big it's a big gutter punch and, and you really feel it mm. and you're really connecting with the characters and what they're going through and um, it's just interesting to see uh, them in a different light and I kind of wish the dub got to get, get to this point because we would have got to see some really good uh, performances from these actors getting to be a bit more serious because mm. while the episodes in the first season are, you know, they're, they're serious moments, um, they never get as serious as, as this part of the manga does. Uh, so I liked that story. Um, the other one I really liked is they they all gather around one night and they all tell ghost stories and uh, I thought that was fascinating that's the one time where the characters actually being greyed out sort of stick figure like uh, actually worked because they're telling these abstract stories and actually not knowing what the characters face and stuff look like it kind of added something weirdly creepy to it um, <laughs> and it's just interesting how all those stories sort of manifest uh, uh, around certain, certain things that are happening to them around them um so that that's that one i really liked and as i mentioned at the start of this uh the monkey's paw their version of it i thought was really interesting um twist on the story uh obviously some people went over the the story because they got adapted on the simpsons and that was a more comedic approach <laughs> um this one is a bit more it starts off actually a bit more lighthearted and then what i like is by the end of it it gets really dark and, and quite creepy yeah um, so Definitely yeah does. that's but, um, that's some of our uh, favorite episodes but eric yeah. what were you gonna say um well, i was just gonna i was just gonna mention how um towards that towards that um towards that episode you mentioned with himawari and the ending of one character i felt like before that, um, I guess several stories before that, I felt like there were there were more more heading towards a um, a completely different theme because at the start of the theme um, at the start the theme was um, more about wish granting and mm. consequences and the monkey paw thing, mm -hmm. but then um, it kind of resolved from that into more of um, a theme of endings, um, you know, things ending, which is something. I guess I guess which I guess which was something that was um, even I felt was um, a bit of an inevitability, um, you know, with manga uh, the I'm stories honestly, ending and all that. But yeah, I'm honestly surprised they didn't just end the story there. I, I the, my biggest problem with the way um, when they just uh, change up the story at one point is um, I thought like once they did the first volume, I figured that was the end of it. But they kept on going, and then nothing else interesting really happened. After that, mm. it was kind of meandering for a bit, and I felt a better way to end the story would have been have the big change happen, and then just that's the end. That's that's that. You know, it's yeah. sad, but that's that. Because we 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 see some more stuff go on, but we don't really need to see any more else go on. There's nothing really else interesting that happens really after that. There's only maybe one or two things, and even then, like. Mm. It's not worth it so yeah I, I that, that really would be another them. con for me as well with this this manga which i love and this show that i love but that's that's probably my biggest issue with it mm. yeah um i mean that's pretty much yeah as you've described it that's also pretty much around the time that i also kind of stopped um looking into it mm. um well it was great for it to continue and it was great that it um you know there could still be a story after that um 
the the biggest uh-huh. part the biggest part of what made the story great was miss it was um once it was gone you couldn't really you couldn't really continue much with it um, yeah. and I think the ending and resolution around then would have been enough to kind of just go that's what cool, I, I that's think it. you you they did a they paced it so well and then they've got a really good momentum going and then it's just sort of um, ends and then it's just sort of it's I don't know it's like a dying corpse that's trying to like keep getting up when it's when it's it's done <laughs> and it needs to know um, it's done like it's just hey, that's hey, the biggest well, problem I have of it well, some dying corpses do still have value. Um, I, I think... thought you were going to say dying corpses have feelings too, Connor. No, no, no. Some dying corpses <laughs> still have value as long as you know how to actually keep beating them back to life. Um, okay. You know, it's a joke. It's a joke that I've heard mentioned. Didn't know you were a necromancer, few... <laughs> Eric. Well, what? <laughs> Didn't know you were a necromancer, Eric. No, 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 no. But it is a joke and. Um, a, a kind of a meme that I saw when it was associated with Naruto. Um, yeah. You know, after the um, you know after the ser- the manga series ended, uh, you know, you know after all that, they mm. continued on with um, you know with the well, with that's the just funny. Of his own son Boruto, <laughs> um, which they I should thought, just uh, Bar- Baruto should just be called Money the TV the, the TV series. But that's, or a, but that's the thing, Money that's the, the manga. That, that's the whole. That's the whole. Um, beat beat the. Um, Beat the dead fish until it yeah. comes back to life. Because even the author doesn't want to write anymore. I don't. I don't even know if he actually writes bar, uh, the second part of it. Pretty sure that's yeah. someone else that that's taking over for it. But oh, yeah. that's another discussion for another to- another time. Eric, what are your final thoughts on the anime of Triple X Holic? Um, definitely worth a watch, um, regardless of where you want to finish. Um, Subbed and dubbed, um, yeah, go ahead, have a go with both and choose your favorite. My personal favorite was um, the dubbed because of the um, uh, just just because just because there was a bit more fun to it, especially mm-hmm. with um, the voice actress for Yuko. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously, both would be just as much fun to watch. Um, it doesn't differ too much from the manga, um, but it's and. It still follows the themes of the manga. It still has, um, you know, uh, everything is still there, and it's definitely still worth a watch if um, if you're kind of into the whole supernatural, mystical, creepy shop, vi- creepy shop theme theme um, series. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely give it a watch. Um, and yeah, yeah, I, I would I would second a lot of what um, what Eric said. I would recommend people go check out the movie. The movie's really good. Uh, I, th- I think it's great. Go go check that out. Um, watch it in the. I say watch. Give it a go in the dub. The sub is good, but I recommend the dub because uh, the movie has some great visuals that I think. Um, just for me, I, I don't think. Um, I don't think it's impossible for someone to enjoy a movie you know the visuals in a movie while reading subtitles but i do think um you can you can focus on it a bit more when you don't have the subtitles there uh and for me i like watching the show and dub a little bit more sometimes because since i've read the manga i already kind of know what's going to happen um i already kind of no um well I, i to me i've already read for it once and sometimes i don't want to read through it again and uh, the animation as i said isn't spectacular here so i feel like when i am watching the anime especially if i'm watching it in sub there are a couple times where yeah i'm enjoying the japanese actors and stuff but at the same time i'm also watching it and going like oh i feel like i'm just reading a bad like a not as well done version of the manga basically because i'm reading it and it's not moving as uh fast or as or as um as as well as i would i would think it would and when i put it into the dub i'm not no i'm not focusing on that as much because i'm focusing a little bit less on that um so so yeah i i i think i think uh colin clinkenbeard who voices yuko does a great job jay michael tatum does a great job cast generally pretty good and as i said the japanese dub is great too uh just for me depending on how i'm feeling with uh if i've just read like for a bunch of the manga I generally probably going to go with the dub on that type of scenario but my final thoughts yeah I'd probably recommend people 
check out maybe one episode of or two episodes of the anime uh but go check out the movie the movie's great um i've watched a little bit of some of those second seasons they're okay uh some of their appearances in the Subasa universe are a little bit weird because they changed the art style for some weird reason for Hulk, um, for Subasa, so that's a little weird, but other than that, um, yeah, give it a go. Uh, we'll be back right after the break. guys we're at the break right now uh so guys you may not know but i do another podcast not just with our great guest eric here but um i do another podcast called, called insert cast and uh we have we have multiple guests on that podcast where i i basically interview people in the audio industry and um we're always looking for new guests so if you know someone in the audio industry who would like to be on a podcast uh please let me know that can be a sound engineer or a musician or a voice actor or even a voice acting director uh anyone who's in the audio industry all i ask is that they maybe have uh some some knowledge of the audio technology doesn't have to be a sound desk but maybe even just an amp you know sound equipment um and and if they have skype or zoom or some sort of way that i can talk with them uh if they're outside of new zealand um preferably yeah something like skype or something like that because i can't necessarily always do phone interviews with some of those people so yeah uh so yeah you can email me if you know someone at insertcast.co.nz that's insertcast.co.nz let's uh let's get back to the podcast we are back from the break this is alternating sloth podcast episode four i'm just gonna repeat that again this is alternating sloth podcast episode four okay eric why don't you tell the folks at home what manga are we reviewing this week well the manga that we've um review we've um we're going to be reviewing is Yume Kui Kenbun, which is his Japanese name, mm-hmm. or Nightmare Inspector in its uh, English name. This was written by Mashiba Shin, and what it's about is a cafe, is a uh, cafe that's uh, that's home to a sort of investigator who helps people get rid of their nightmares. Um, he sort of helps uh, understand them as well. They're not always being... nightmares. Sorry, what was that? Um, he helps them understand them as well. I would say he they they're not always nightmares. Yeah. They're sometimes just nice dreams that he helps people understand. Mm. For the yeah, for for the most part that I've read through this, it looks like um these are dreams that people see as nightmares without really understanding that they are there to kind of help them. Um, but obviously in the series, he's described as a sort of otherworldly creature known as a baku who eats these nightmares mm. um which is which is in, in itself an interesting concept um w- looking at this i realized i've actually read this a long long time ago oh, okay. um honestly well, yeah I, honestly it kind of slipped my mind but reading through I this do i have do have a, uh, a few things about it <laughs> i do have a volume so, here right with me volume six which yeah. you might have read that might have been the volume because Eric has had a habit of uh, reading some of the stuff I've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that might have been where it was from. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do remember it. I do remember it to an mm. extent. And looking back through it, a few things, you know, do pop up and do become a bit more memorable. And I have read, I have read um, at least maybe mm, the first volume. Um, 
but looking at it, it is um, it's definitely got an interesting um, concept. It's episodical, just like Triple X Holic, and yeah. it does delve into the more mysterious spiritual side of things, just like Triple X Holic. But obviously, instead of granting mm-hmm. wishes, um, the main character here grants. Um, is it the main character? Hikuro Hiroko? Hiroko. Already Hiroko. M- names are mixed Hiroko. Yeah. Hiroko. Yeah, Hiroko. Yeah. Yeah. Hiroko. Um, instead of kind of granting wishes, he grants people um, an escape from their nightmares. Yeah. Um, which is definitely an already interesting episode. Already interesting. Um, he, he's an interesting character because um, you, you think he's also, he's kind of gender ambiguous. He's... Um, got this interesting character design he's got this cane with like an hourglass sort of thing on it which he uses to enter people's mm-hmm. dreams uh this manga one thing you didn't mention as well is it's it's set in the 18th century so it's actually got an interesting mix of uh western and eastern clothing and and that sort of style a lot of mm. um i wouldn't be surprised if this is actually meant to be set in hokkaido or something because it's a lot of western style buildings as well along with japanese style buildings yeah it's a, yeah especially with the especially with the cafe that um seems to have more of a mm. it does seem much closer to what a western cafe would look like yep. than and what um uh, yeah you know what you it would have in the east um especially japan mm-hmm. um with a cafe looking with the cafe basically having a setting of um its own tables and chairs and all these potter plants all around. Well, and a Japanese one would have a bunch of the, chairs. The whole, the whole architecture be... design of it is more Western, more, you know, yeah, it, it, the design is more Western, a bit more um, concrete brickwork type yep. um, uh, design the buildings. So, mm. yeah, the influence, yeah, you're right, the influence there is, you know, more Western mm. than Eastern. Um, and now the author, I don't know if he's done anything else, but I just want to say his name because it's a nice name that flows off the tongue. Shin Mashiba or Shin Mashiba. Uh, but just saying that it, it almost sounds like it's one of those sort of um, red liver, yellow liver, you know, sort of things. Shin Mashiba, Shin, you know, it just rolls off the tongue kind of nicely. Uh, this manga, though, I wanted people to know more about it because um, I think Viz finally you can go online and you can actually you pay a bit and I think you can read most of this manga now but um, I had to actually send Eric a, a link to like a free version of this because even if you just want to read it for free it's not that easy to find like it was really out of print uh, for a long time like I have volume 6 because there's no volume one um that i could find and i remember i think one of the libraries had a volume but it was like volume five or eight or something like so it didn't really have a uh, the release of it is hard to find and i've when i looked online for some copies of like all the manga in a set that's pretty hard sometimes you can get like a volume one but if you want to get like volume two you might not be able to find it like it's it's a bit of a hard um thing to watch a uh, viz i haven't l- looked at their pay for service but i saw it that it's up f- if you want to read it there um mm. which i want to ask eric how did you so i sent you a link did you read off of that link that i sent you or did you read a bit of it and then go somewhere else and read the rest because even that link had a couple um, bits where it was out of I order or to find What's and what's interesting is that I actually managed to find um, because I use was it Manga Manga Nello as one of the main um, yeah that's the one I sent you I think um, okay then um, actually I just immediately went to Manga Nello because that is the that's one of the few um, sources I can use to look at um, even though Manga Nello has I don't know whether it's just me but for me uh, but for me it has had a few issues in terms of um, kind of uh, connection issues in terms of just actually getting to it. Yeah. But I have managed to find almost whole volumes and really? chapters looking at this. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I. it appears to be uh, uh, first volume, second, and only third volume, unfortunately. Um, so not a complete set, but it looks to be enough to, mm. you know, get get a good start going see whether or not you like it and then yeah continue on from there um yeah because that was my biggest already is mm, that was my biggest fault with this was the the 
the availability is a little bit hard. But yeah, as you were saying, sorry. Um, oh no, I pretty much finished there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that, that's. I mean, um, what did you let? Let's. Um, we've got into the story. What's just some basic pros of and cons about spoiling anything? Well, what, what were just some, you know, some things you like, some things you didn't like. Well, well, from from what I've kind of read, um, I do like. Um, I guess I guess I do like the premise of it. You know, the whole um, the whole th- the whole thing about the main character, you know, having the ability to enter people's dreams and nightmares, and then kind of not only use it for fuel but help them resolve it. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, at this point, I've got really nothing to say about the character and their development. Is um, they seem a bit. They do seem they do seem a bit um, one dimensional. They seem they seem to just be there mm. at the start to just kind of you know wait to wait for someone to come in, eat their nightmares, and then um, you know that's it, move on. You know they're you know I'm not expecting full development from start to finish, but pretty much no there doesn't seem to be much beyond what he, what's happening with him right now mm-hmm. um, I do like some of the first few chapters where he does seem to help and resolve the um, you know uh, people uh, people and the nightmares they have but um, obviously I guess at the end of it all if it seems like to him is just um, it's just another source of food for him you know mm-hmm. as long as these people have nightmares it's good for him because mm-hmm. They provide them the source of food. Mm-hmm. Um, the art style, eh, I don't mind the art style. It um, there is um, it is it is quite unique. It looks really great, and you know the character. It does um, you know it is quite it is quite detailed. Mm-hmm. That's what I like mm-hmm. about it. It is quite detailed, and it seems to. It does remind me of an, of an art style of another series, but I just can't put my <laughs> finger on it at the moment. I think yeah. I had a name, but. What, what would be uh, your biggest head, con? But... Like, what, what's one thing you don't quite like about it? Because you've been quite positive. What's what's one thing that's maybe not as good as, as you, you know, as some of the rest of the stuff you've mentioned? I guess just just the development of the main character. Um, he just, as I've mentioned before, he just seems to be one-dimensional. Um, oh, okay. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make it seem like there's anything mm. beyond, oh, new customer, eat their nightmare, <laughs> move on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that's pretty much my con for me at the mm. moment. I'm might I'm probably wrong, and yeah. there's definitely much more to this character than what I've just said. But yeah. at the so moment, that's all I'm pretty much. How many saying. volumes did you read up to? Um, maybe halfway through the first volume at least. Okay. Um, sadly, sadly though. Um, but I am, I am planning to read a bit more of this. Okay. Um, since the whole concept seems to be quite similar to. Triple X Holic, so yep. I am looking to looking to expand mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Look, look into it a bit more. Mm-hmm. So my general thoughts, I um, before I spoil anything, uh, I I think the design, the art is is um, very interesting. It it is kind of typical shoujo, but it does the job, and there's a lot of great work with the shading and. Um, the darkness and and uh, just some of the storytelling is just really uh, really interesting twists and turns in the story. My biggest problem would be um, is actually when they do get more into character development. I've got volume six here. When they get a bit more into um, Hiroko and some of his backstory, um, it might just be because I'm on volume six and there's some stuff I'm missing that's might have been explained in another volume but i didn't find it that interesting some of the backstory stuff and some of the other stuff going on Uh, my other they do some comedic moments and and some of the other volumes that just doesn't hit um and then my other issue is the fact that i think the first two stories aren't as good as some of the other stories later on but generally i like the artwork there's some really good twists and turns um and I think it's just an interesting premise, and I'm a sucker for these uh, magic shop type shows that, um, as we've mentioned previously in the Holoc review, have these interesting monkey paw type twists to them. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the um, yeah, go ahead. So um, Eric, what uh, I was going to say, what um, 
Let, let's put a spoiler tag here and can you tell me what were some some moments that you really liked um reading this i guess the one um the, the one moment i liked was the um girl whose days seem to be repeating over and over again um it seems to have it seems to have included an episode where it seem it, um it creates a par it creates an almost paradoxical situation where the girl i guess to put it simply dream one doesn't like the doesn't like her days to repeat dreams up a blank slate room and then writes in the room what she wants to happen tomorrow mm -hmm. and then this whole thing keeps repeating over and over again and so and uh we're not gonna we're not gonna drop the twist yeah. I, I even though i did put it actually i'm gonna i'm gonna say even though i put a big spoiler yeah. um i do we we will reveal maybe one part of the twist but not the full twist so eric just tell us the first part of it not the full reveal well that was the first part of it basically the girl okay. is doesn't like her days repeating so what she does is um you know dream up a room where she could write anything and her and whatever happens tomorrow will be based on what she wants to happen you know mm -hmm. um so she or rather, what she does instead is kind of uh, stop, stop, the, stop the next day from continuing on, you know. Um, she seems to be a typical girl who goes to school every day, so she's gotten sick and tired of it. So she dreams up a room where she could, you know, keep the same day going over and over, you know, so she doesn't have to go back tomorrow and mm -hmm. see it, you know, see that kind of repetition. Mm -hmm. um, but... I guess where it becomes, I guess where it becomes a bit of a um, monkey's paw situation for her is she gets bored of that kind of eventuality as well. So she si decides to write something different, and this is what kind of leads her to be, um, you know, this is what kind of leads her to get an um, help another from interesting the, twist. Yeah, it, it leads it leads her to get help from the Nightmare Inspector and leads mm. to. It continues to lead to another twist where she asks him to try and fix it for her, hmm. and I guess we'll stop it right there because then we'll get into the dangerous. Um, <laughs> the the main reason I'm I'm everything. not completely spoiling this is because, uh, as Eric mentioned, I think you've only read the first two volumes of this. You've only read the first two, like something something like maybe the first volume. Um, yeah, first volume and a half. So Eric, I don't I don't know how long it's been since he's read volume six. So I don't want to completely spoil it for him, um, and I want him to somewhat continue with this. So that's why we're not going to completely spoil this. Um, we're just going to maybe reveal the first part, and then Eric and the audience can uh, discover the next part of it as as they decide to read along this. Um, so the I, I read the first story as I said I didn't think it was that great um, the first story is mostly about uh, people's I guess um, narcissism the you know not noticing that someone else likes you because you're too much into yourself and and how about that can damage you and it, uh, that was there's some interesting themes to that but the execution of it I thought was a little bit sloppy and not as well paced as some of the other stories but um when we get into volume six which is the one that i own and have read a number of times um there's an interesting story with a character called uh kieko she's visiting the cafe because she's having this weird dream where she's walking through kind of a, a cavern kind of a cave sort of thing and um she keeps on having this dream and she's bound by this rope and she can't seem to get off this rope and as she walks around this rope is uh pulling on her and um she she keeps on walking around on this rope and we sort of are to believe that uh that this tunnel that they're in is actually just this big giant circle um hiroko walks around at once and then he actually comes back around her because it's just one giant circle and what we're believed is this is meant to represent her decision because she's looking after her sick brother and basically um this circle is re representing and the rope is representing her uh 
having a hard time trying to decide whether to stay with her brother and look after him, um, even though he's demanding a little too much of her or for her to move on by herself and um, and go on by herself. And, and we find out there's actually even more of a deeper meaning to this and there's more to this uh, dream that she's having. And that's where the interesting twist of the story uh, comes in. And I, I thought that was a really interesting story. Um, there's another one with like a young teenage girl where she's uh, she's going through her memories and her dreams and she's really admiring this guy and there's something um, a little off in the dream but we don't quite know what and the twist that we get in the end is quite an interesting uh, twist as well so I liked both of those stories in volume six um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue. I haven't read this volume in a while, um, and I didn't get much time last night to read all of it. Uh, so I just read the first two sort of uh, stories that were in there. But they were both uh, I thought very interesting. And um, I, I guess actually I did read some of the backstory and some of the other stuff in there, but I didn't find it as interesting as these uh, two stories here. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, um, yeah only read up the first volume but that actually does sound like an interesting story mm. in of itself mm. um i'll definitely try to get up to that and see if i can yeah have a read have a read of that yeah um which i definitely do because nightmare inspector sorry is it nightmare inspector I yeah nightmare inspector um, and, and let's let's go into our yeah, final that, thoughts because this is what it seems like you're going into anyways you, yeah, you were saying nightmare inspector yeah, i think um yeah, I think um, yeah, I think Nightmare Inspector is definitely um, enjoyable at this point. Um, it does have a, it does have this, um, it does have an interesting art style, and I like it because it's quite detailed and is um, yeah, especially with the way they um, created the shading and the um, even the memory scenes. Um, memory scenes seem to have a lot more details and shading than. Um, you know the normal presence scenes because I guess that's the whole theme of it. Um, especially one where it kind of shows a whole um, group of people in um, you know a um, opera house, and that is a quite a detailed picture, which is something I like. Um, and yeah, the main I would like to see, I would like to continue on and see um, the main character develop a bit more, um, and see what else. What are the kind of nightmares that um. You know, exist for these people. I've seen. I've already seen nightmares where a person's day repeats um, another nightmare because of unrequited love and mm. all that. As sappy as that might be, um, <laughs> but I would like to see what other kind of nightmares exist for these people and see how mm. what kind of resolutions comes from these nightmares. Because this does. Um. This does. It does always. Um. It, it is. It is interesting. It is interesting to see, considering that, you know every human being even you and me Connor we've yeah. had nightmares before and you know we've always wanted these nightmares resolved as quickly as we can we never want them to repeat I, I'm always so, fascinated by I nightmares guess, because yeah. I think you can get interesting stories and dreams in them and there's things that can't happen to you in the real yeah. world that can happen in a dream and I think that's a that's an interesting concept in itself yeah this is something I'm already enjoying about Nightmare Inspector and I think that's the one thing I enjoyed when I did read it the first time is that whole concept of there's a, a nightmare exists okay and so what'll you know what exactly will it mean for people because you know nightmare inspector doesn't exactly say this is a nightmare this is what it is it's here's a nightmare what is it let's mm. figure it out yeah um, which is something I like mm. um, so I'll definitely have to keep reading this. But so far, what I've seen is I do like it, you know, not including my whole rant about the main character. Um, I really do enjoy the nightmare, how it's executed, how it's explained, and how it resolves itself, um, especially my favorite paradoxical... Um, hmm. I guess my favorite little paradoxical... Um, uh, what is it? Yeah, chapter. My paradoxical ca chapter. That was my favorite one. Um, so I would like to see if there's something similar to that um, continuing on. Um, but yeah, so far that's pretty much my little review of the. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I think of yeah. the series so far. I I, I really like um, the the twists and the turns, as I said before, and uh, I I like the the art style. But what I really like as well, this manga plays around a bit with the actual format of telling the story because it's in a dream, 
and what we perceive and and what we don't notice and what we do notice um i just think that's that's fascinating and i i would love to read more of this um as i said it's a little bit hard to find sometimes and that's that's the biggest issue i have but other than that it's great sorry let me do that again other than that it's great all right now we are mm-hmm. gonna go to a segment that i'm gonna call finish it and this is where we uh talk about a title that has been uh finished by one of us that we've previously reviewed on a show so let's hear that feed music <laughs> eric tell us about what title you finished this week well, I finished the title you um, mentioned to me, uh, "Happiness." That oh, was yeah. the um, that was the vampire esque um, series. Um, so I managed to finish the whole thing because I was really interested in seeing the um, you know. Uh, By exactly the way, how spoiler, these vampires spoilers. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, looking at it, I did. Re- I really liked it. I. Yeah, I kind of thought I kind of thought it finished without kind of explaining too much um, about the whole world. It did um, it did finish on a note where you know um, our main character and his new um, his new love interest managed to escape, managed to survive. Um, it it didn't it didn't include it didn't kind of um, show the characters growing up, growing old. Um, except for the ones that vampires, obviously, um, <laughs> and how this is kind of, yeah, and it's kind of, it kind of resolved without explaining too much, which I kind of thought was disappointing because I felt like a lot of what this new new vampire concepts could be explored. Mm. Um, but what I did like reading this, something I've almost um, never seen in any other vampire um, sort of. Uh, genres is how they regenerate. You know, the vampires mm-hmm. in this regenerated from base material. You know, unless of course that base material was, um, you know, the base, the base, the base organs and base um, bones and structures they um, are eaten. Um, the yeah, because um, one of the characters was um, essentially essentially only um, brought down to just their brain. Mm. And their consciousness still exists in that brain, and that consciousness still allows the brain to, you know, regenerate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, "This is awesome!" Mm-hmm. You know, though it showed it maybe one or two chapters, um, you still get to see this character evolve from, you know, a brain to a fully bodied person, and. That was just that was just the best thing to see, you know. Mm. Um, so while I was actually quite happy to see the, um, you know, the extent of these vamp- these new these kind of vampire this concept of vampires development, um, I was disappointed that not not as much was explored, and it seems the series just kind of finished abruptly. You know, it's only about um it was fifty chapters, which is still long, but it didn't seem to have um. Uh, the the focus seems to have shifted away from kind of exploring the um, the vampires to just kind of exploring this. Oh, it's kind of resolving the characters, you know, the si- character situations, you know, uh, and the families and all the characters that went vampires and kind of seeing them all mm-hmm. grow old mm-hmm. and time passing, mm-hmm. which I guess isn't something else that you see quite often. But yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess my only gripe with this is how um, how little the development of the um, you know how little how little um, uh, the vampire's development was kind of mm-hmm. seen and um, explored. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the only other gripe is the organization that was um, you know looking out for these vampires, like who were they, what are, what exactly are they doing, and mm-hmm. blah blah blah. But, mm-hmm. yeah. That's fine. The series itself was... I still enjoyed it, you know? It was a good read. It was a good read. It was a fun read, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I haven't looked at anything else the um, author has made, but, um, you know, other than that, I did especially enjoy this um, this manga series. Mm-hmm. This has mm-hmm. been Alternating with Eric, episode 14. Catch you later, guys. <laughs>